Good morning. We have about two minutes until we get started. Um, so we'll just wait for some people to trickle in. Today's class, um, I'm just going to start talking and hopefully some people will pop in. Um, it's our couch potato class. So I've done one of these before and I really liked it and I got a really good response from people about it. Um, one feedback point that I did receive is that people love the concept of being able to do these exercises sitting down, especially if you have like an injury or maybe let's say you don't have the best tips anymore, whatever it may be. Um, and so people recommended that I try and tone the class down a little bit so that they can do the whole class. So what we're going to do today is we're going to end up doing the entire class seated, which is um, last time when I did this class, we started standing, we did some warming up exercises, we ended up on the floor at some point, and some people just, um, they're not able to do that at the moment or they're not able to do it anymore. Um, so I want to make sure that this video can reach everyone because that's kind of the point of this couch potato class. It's for people that maybe have to sit down a lot, people that are stuck at a desk, people that are stuck in quarantine at home right now. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to be doing today. Um, I also recorded a video yesterday and it's about breath support. So we're going to be using some of those concepts today. And in that video, I talked about um, the difference between just breathing through an exercise and actually using your breath to support the exercise. Um, so I'll kind of reiterate what that meant or what it means. Um, and to use your breath to support an exercise, it means that you're using your inhalation and your exhalation to find the natural rhythm for your exercise. It can help make the exercise a little bit easier. Um, but whereas if you're just breathing, uh, it's not exactly helping you in any way. It's keeping you alive, obviously, if you're breathing through an exercise, but it's not supporting the exercise and the big movements that might have to happen. Um, so I'll just get started. It's 10 o'clock. Um, we'll just wait for some more people to trickle in, but we're going to start seated in our chair. You do need a chair for this because it is our couch potato class. Um, so bring your chair in if you don't have it, and then just have a seat towards the edge of your chair, not so far out that you're going to fall down, but far enough out that we can move around a little bit more. So we're going to start with our feet in a parallel position and our knees should be right over our ankles in this position so they're kind of tracking over one another. We're going to start with our vacuum abs. So what that means is we're going to suck our abs in. We should feel some engagement happen in the core and you should be able to breathe still. It should be a little bit harder but you're going to feel a slight difference between when you're regularly sitting here and when you're actually sucking your abs in. So we'll hold that position. Make sure you're still breathing, using that breath support here. You should feel some work in the core. And go ahead and release. We'll do this one more time. So after you take a few deep breaths without sucking your abs in, then I want you to go ahead and engage your core and pull your belly towards the back of your spine. So it's not just sucking in to get into a pair of jeans, it's actually engaging the core and holding it there. And hold, make sure you're still breathing through this exercise. I know it looks like I'm not doing anything, but it's all in the core. And release. So now we're going to start by warming up our spine slightly. Um, this is the first type of movement that I've done this morning and it might be the same for you. Maybe you've already worked out, maybe you've gone for a run, whatever it may be. We're just going to start nice and light and then we'll move into the bigger exercises later. So I'm going to drop my chin towards my chest and then drop my head towards the back of the room and we'll do this a few more times. Twice more. And last one. And now drop the right ear towards your right shoulder and center and left center. Keep going. You should feel good in the side of your neck. One more time each direction. And now go ahead and drop your head forward and we're going to take a big circle over to the right hitting all points of the room. And one more time. And reverse opposite direction. And last one. And now go ahead and roll all the way down. 
So we're just going to hang over our legs and kind of let the neck and all of everything that we are just kind of warming up, let it hang here in this position. And now we're going to ground down through our hips and we're going to roll back up sequentially through the spine until all of our vertebra are stacked at the top. And now we're going to do a high release, opening the chest up and bring it back to neutral spine. We'll do this one more time, drop the chin to the chest, rolling all the way down. And go ahead and ground down through the hips, roll sequentially up through the spine, and release the head at the top. And bring it back through center. And now we're going to take our ear to our shoulder one more time. We're going to make it a bigger movement. So we're going to also try and reach our ear towards our hip and bring it back up through center, opposite direction, ear towards your hip. So we're taking this lateral movement now and twice more and center last one and center go ahead and take your feet out a little bit wider than where they're at now so we're still in a parallel position but our hips are open a little bit wider and that's going to change the stretch a tiny bit so we're going to drop our chin towards our chest and continue to roll back down through center And ground down in the hips and roll sequentially back up through the spine to a high release at the top. And one more time back through neutral, roll back down. And ground down through your hips, slowly roll all the way back up to the top. Release at the top. And restack your spine, neutral spine here. We're now going to take our ear towards our hip one more time, taking that lateral movement, getting a nice stretch in the opposite side of your body as well. And back through center. And left side. And center. Twice more, right side. And center left side and center and now we're just going to keep our heels where they are but turn your toes out so we're opening our hips out now we were in a parallel position now we're in a turned out position and from here i want you to press yourself forward towards the end of your chair a little bit more so that we have a little more room to work with so from here what we're going to do is we're going to try and fold forward if you can take your hands all the way down to the ground that's great if not just get as low as you can you're still going to feel a stretch in your inner thighs so as low as you can get down in this stretch and try to actively press those knees out to the side so we're not just kind of hanging out here in this stretch we're still working while we're here if you're happy, you can stay right where you are, or if you would like, you can take that right leg up and extend it to the side. This will change the stretch up a little bit. It feels a little, it's a little different, but it feels good. And bring that right foot back in. We're gonna do that same thing with that left leg if you did that right side and it felt okay. Extend that left leg straight. And go ahead and bring that left foot back in. And now we're going to reground through those hips and we're going to roll ourselves back up to standing. Again, restacking through each vertebra all the way to the top. And bring those feet back into parallel. So if you just popped in here, um, we are doing our couch potato class part two. Um, and I did have some feedback last time to try and make this class a little more accessible. Um, so meaning, you know, there's not so much getting up and down and all of that around the chair. It's just going to be seated in the chair. Um, so moving on, you do need a chair if you want to do these exercises, but you can modify it if you don't have a chair around. Um, so we are going to take our right leg now and we're going to pick it up and cross it over our left thigh, making a figure four with our legs. 
And I'm going to take my right hand, push down on my knee, and my left hand is going to pull up on my foot. So we're getting a little stretch in opposition here. In the hips, it should feel really good. It's really stretching out the back of the leg here, getting into your hips a little bit. And you can decide how much pressure you're applying in each of these positions. It's totally up to you. You know your body better than anyone else. And now we're going to take hold of the bottom of our knee. We're going to hug that knee into our chest. And release. We're going to drop this right foot now. And we're going to do the same thing with our left. So we pick up that left leg, cross it over the right. Again, push down on that left knee, pull up on that left foot. So we're getting a stretch in opposition, getting into that hip and that glute muscle. And then let's take hold of the bottom of your knee and hug that knee into your chest. Keep that knee turned out. And gently release that foot back down. Go ahead and drop that left foot and pick that right foot back up for me. Figure four once more on this side. We're going to do that same thing. Push down as you pull up, getting into that glute and the back of that leg. And release yourself from that stretch. Pull that knee and that foot in towards your center. Hold it there, hold it there. So if you missed the beginning of this video, I did talk about a video that I posted yesterday, which um, talks about breath support. And you can go ahead and switch sides one more time. So in that video, I was talking about how to use your breath um, versus just breathing through an exercise. There's a way to use your breath to support the exercise. And go ahead and push down on your knee and lift that foot. So we're going to try and find our natural rhythm today with our breath. So maybe find a time that feels good to inhale. Maybe this will be my inhale. Maybe my exhale will be pulling that leg into my center. I did mention how usually the hardest part of a workout is when I want to exhale. Um, it makes it a little bit easier for me. It helps my workout go through a little smoother and release that foot back down and drop that foot all the way. So wherever you're able to find a natural rhythm for inhalation and exhalation to help support you through this class and any class and any part of your day, whatever you need it for, um, it can be really beneficial. So now we're gonna take that right knee and we're going to extend it straight so that foot is now flexed, left foot stays planted, and I'm going to grip my chair down here. So we're trying to activate our lower abdominals now and we're going to lift that right leg straight up towards the ceiling. We're going to lift and lower with a flexed foot. We're gonna do it four times here and then we'll point through that foot, same thing, lift and lower four times. So we go lift for one and lift two, here's three, and four. Point the foot, we go. One and two. Here's three and four. Go ahead and bend that right knee. And if you would like, you can tuck it underneath your chair and let that hip flexor sort of relax, let that quad relax. And you can even take a rotation, stretching out the back. and bring it back through center. Now we're going to do that same thing with our left leg. So we're going to extend that knee, we flex that foot up towards the ceiling, ground down with those hands, and we're going to lift with a flexed foot for four, and then lift with a pointed foot for four. Here we go, we use those lower abdominals to lift for one, and here's two, and three, here's four, point through the foot, one, here's two, and three, here's four. Go ahead and bend your knee, and we're going to tuck that knee underneath if you would like that deeper stretch again in that hip flexor, and maybe rotate the opposite direction. And bring it back through center, release that foot back into that parallel position. Now what we're going to do is we're going to activate our core. We did do our vacuum abs earlier in the class, but now we're going to do a little more intense core work. So if you need to take a break at any point, please feel free to do so. 
What we're going to do is I'm at the front edge of my chair and we're going to keep a nice neutral spine now. But we're going to lean back, lean back as far as you can while keeping that straight spine. Those hands go to the side of the head and we're just taking little rotations side to side. So we're activating our core while we're doing this exercise. And you can even take this exercise up a notch by lifting those knees and taking a full bicycle here in your chair. Totally up to you. Um, depending on the chair that you're in also, if you have a back to your chair and it's not a bench, it might be a little harder. So you can also do this on the floor. You can do the same thing with your feet on the floor, rotation or taking the knees up and doing your full bicycle. So we're going to do eight rotations, eight full rotations. So that would be one and two. So each side counts for one. We'll do eight full rotations and we lean back, arms go to the side of the head and we rotate for one and right. This is two and switch. This is three and switch. This is four and switch. This is five, halfway there, switch, and six, switch, here seven, and switch, last one, eight, and switch, and bring it back up. Maybe take a big stretch in the belly, arching the back, and you can also curve in the spine, hold on to your knees as you push back, through your shoulders, through your scapula, through your spine, everything that's back there. And one more time, big release at the top. And arch it back. And release back to a neutral spine. So we're gonna do that one more time. Um, sorry if it's not your favorite, but it is good for us to activate that core. Um, and it also helps us uh, to support the rest of our body. So if our core is strong, we're gonna have better balance in the end. We're gonna be able to have more stamina. Um, so we're just trying to, you know, lightly strengthen these things today while using this chair as a prop. Um, and this is, you know, this exercise and these stretches are things that you can do while you're at home on the couch watching TV. If you're like, oh, my neck's feeling tight, you can do, you know, these exercises, these stretches to help with that tightness while you're sitting there. So all you need to do is just be aware of what's going on in your body. And this tool is for you to then use to try and counteract all of that that's going on. So we'll do it one more time. Again, feel free to lift those legs up and bicycle, or you can just keep those feet planted and take your lean back, keep that spine nice and straight, and arms go to the side of the head. We have one and switch. This is two and switch. This is three and switch. This is four and switch. Here's five, halfway there. Switch and six and switch. Here's seven and switch. Last one here, eight and switch. And one more time, go ahead and arch through the back and curve through the spine and arch. and curve and bring it back up to neutral spine. So now we're going to take that right arm and we're going to thread it underneath our left. So we're taking a nice stretch in that arm and maybe circle out the wrist in one direction and go ahead and reverse your circle. And release that arm. Let's switch sides. Left arms underneath the right. And take a little circle. And reverse. And now we're going to take that right arm up and over the head. And you can use that left hand to pull that arm even lower if you've got it. And switch sides. And release. 
release those arms back down. So I wanted to make sure that we were taking care of our shoulders um, and getting them ready for the next movement that we're going to do. So we're going to do um, some low impact. Um, it's pretty easy, but it might get hard after keeping your arms up for a while. We're just doing some shoulder stabilization exercises. So what that means is I'm going to take my arms out to a T and we're just gonna take little pulses here in this position. So it's not the elbows, it's not the wrists, it's the shoulders. That's where the arm is moving from, is from the shoulders. So we keep the arms straight. We're gonna do 16 pulses here with the palms down. We're gonna flip our palms up 16 pulses here. Palms forward, 16 pulses forward. Palms back, 16 pulses back. We'll do 16 circles forward and 16 circles back. So 16 in each position. I'll just tell you what direction your palms should be facing and we'll begin. So keep your core engaged, spine is nice and straight. Arms go out to a T and we're gonna pulse for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, flip your palms up, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, eight more. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven palms forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight more, seven, six, five, four, three, two, reverse your palms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two little circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, here's eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, reverse, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, more, here's eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, release your arms, maybe shake it out a little bit, so um, if you are a client of mine at the studio, you've probably seen that a ton of times before, and um, if not, then welcome, it's one of my favorite warm-up exercises to do, um, so we're going to do that one more time, but before we do, we're going to do our little in-betweener. So we press our palms and our elbows together, and we keep those elbows at a 90 degree angle. It never drops lower than 90 degrees. We're trying to pulse the arms up towards the ceiling, and it stops at that 90 degrees. So we're going to do 16 of these guys, squeezing the arms together as actively and as much as you can. So start in your 90 degree angle, and we're pressing up for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and release, shake it out. So we're gonna do that whole sequence one more time, starting with the palms moving around, all the way, 16 in each place. We'll go back to that in-betweener, and then we'll move on together. So those arms go out to a T, core is engaged, spine is nice and straight. Palms are down, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, here's eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, flip your palms for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, eight more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, palms forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, here's eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, reverse, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight more, seven, six, five, four, three, two, circles forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight more, seven, six, five, four, three, two, reverse for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, palms and elbows squeeze together, keep those elbows lifted above 90, and we go up for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and here's eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, release, shake it out. Hopefully you felt some burning in there, that is good. That means that we are working everything that needs to be worked. Um, if you need to stretch anything out again, please feel free to do so while I break down this next exercise. So, if you are in a chair or a bench, I want you to try and find a nice place where you can press down actively with your hands. So whether it be on like an armrest that you have, whether it be the chair with the part where you sit down here, wherever you need to go. And we're just going to lift ourselves out of our chair and we're going to hold there. So I'm pushing down through my scapula so I'm not hunching down here. I'm pushing down through my scapula and I'm just holding myself in this chair position like so. So while you're here, we're just trying to de, um, we're trying to elongate our spine. Let your pelvis hang nice and heavy in that position. And we're trying to decompress because we're constantly, you know, gravity is constantly pushing down on us. 
Um, we're always standing unless you're laying down or unless you're sitting down. Um, and even still, unless you're lying down, when you're sitting, gravity is still pushing you down, um, but there's less places for the gravity to push your weight down. So whereas if you're standing up, you have from your head to your feet. If you're sitting down, it's just from your head to your sits bones. So sometimes we can start to slouch like this and we're trying to counteract that and really create space between each vertebra. So push down on your chair. We're lifting ourselves out of our chair and we're holding here for 16 counts. Maybe take a little wiggle with those hips. Really just trying to create space in those vertebrae. It should feel good. It might feel a little pressure in your wrists, but it's gonna be so worth it in your spine. Hold for another eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and lower yourselves back down to your chair. If you need to circle out those wrists, please do so. We're gonna go back into that same position, but we're gonna add a little more work in now. So I'm gonna go back up. I'll show you what we're doing first. I'm going back up. I'm gonna hold this position, but now we're gonna take a little tricep dip. So we're going down and up with those arms. We're going to do eight tricep dips in total. So wherever your hands need to be that is comfortable, if you need to do this, maybe, you know, sitting down on the ground, you can do it down there, whatever you need, but we're gonna stay, I'm gonna stay in the chair for this. So you push it down with your hands, you lift those hips up, and we're gonna dip four, eight, here's seven, and six, here's five, and four, here's three, and two, Last one, go ahead and lower yourself back down. Circle out those wrists. And we're going to continue on with some stretching now. So we just did a little section of conditioning. Um, you can do that as many or as little times as you would like throughout the day. Um, like I said, this class is just a tool for you to use whenever you're feeling like you need to do something after being in a long period of sitting. So. Now we're gonna take that right knee. We're gonna hug that knee into our center. We're in a nice parallel position. Just hug it into your center. And maybe take a little pump in and out with that knee. So try to deactivate your leg as much as you can. This is all in the arms right now. The arms are doing the work to move your leg. So that way we can turn off our quad. We can turn off the hip flexor, which is gonna try and take over this movement. And now hold that knee into your center. I'm going to reach down to grab the arch of my foot with my left hand, and I'm going to just extend that leg as straight as I can, whether it be here, whether it be all the way out. I'm just trying to get a nice stretch in your hamstring here. And if you can't hold your leg up here, feel free to do the same exercise bent over like so with that leg straight on the ground. So my leg is straight here, wherever you are at is fine. And maybe if you'd like, you can open up that arm to take a rotation. And bring it back through center. I'm going to grab both sides of my foot with my hands now, and I'm going to extend that leg as straight as it will go. Again, if your straight is here, that's totally fine. You're still getting a stretch. If you extend it all the way up, obviously you're still getting a stretch. Just depends on where we're at today. Try to keep your core engaged. Try not to hunch over this leg. Try to make sure you're actively working to keep that leg up. And we're going to gently release that leg all the way down to the ground and bring it back in. Maybe show that quad some love. Maybe give it a little massage real fast. Maybe show that hamstring some love if you felt a little pull back there. That's not what we want. All right, now we're going to move on to that left leg. So go ahead and take that knee into your hands and we're gonna pump that knee in and out of our chest. Again, try to deactivate that leg. It's going to wanna take this movement over. Let it be all your arms that are moving your leg, which is very counterintuitive to us. And now we're going to hold that knee into your center. I'm going to reach and grab the inside of my foot with my right hand and extend that leg as straight as it will go, whether it be here, whether it be all the way straight, up to you. It's totally your discretion where that leg will go today. 
And if you would like, you can open that left arm up for a rotation. And bring it back through center. Now I'm going to grab both sides of my foot with my hands, and I'm going to, again, extend that leg as straight as it will go. Try to keep that spine nice and straight. That core is still engaged, so we're not hunching over that leg. It is straight while that leg is straight as well. And go ahead and lower that leg all the way back down and bring it in. Maybe give some love to that quad, maybe give some love to that hamstring. All right, so now we're gonna do that stretch one more time. We're gonna add some modifications, but before we do, I want you to try and reground your feet in a parallel position. So your ankles should be right underneath your knees here. And we're just going to do a few calf raises. So we're just going to pop our heels off the ground and then lower them back down. We're going to do 16 in this position. We're going to do 16 in a wider parallel position and then turned out 16 here. So we're starting in that parallel position with those heels right underneath your knees. And we're going to pop up those heels for one. And here's two and three. Here's four. Keep going. Five and six. Here's seven and eight. Eight more. Here's eight and seven. Here's six and five. Here's four and three. Last two. Last two. One, go ahead and open up to a wider parallel position. So we just take an extra step out. We're still in a parallel position, meaning those toes are pointing directly forward, but the hips are open up a little bit wider. We do 16 here. Here we go, lift those heels for one and two. Here's three and four. Keep going, five and six. Here's seven and eight, eight more, four, eight and seven, here's six, and five, here's four, and three, last two, last one. Now keep those heels where they are, just turn those toes out. Now we're in a turned out position instead of parallel. We're doing the same thing, popping those heels off the ground and lowering back down for 16. Here we go, we go up four, one, and two, here's three, and four, keep going, five and six, here's seven and eight, eight more, four, eight, here's seven and six, here's five and four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and bring those feet back to parallel. You need to show your calves some love. If they haven't done much lately, please do so. Now, I promised we'd go back to those stretches. Um, so we're gonna take that knee, right knee I'll start with, and I'm gonna hold it into my chest now. So I'm just gonna hold it here instead of doing the pumping in and out. Just hold it. And now I'm going to reach down again, grab the arch of my foot with my left hand, and I'm going to extend that leg as straight as it will go, whether it's here, whether it's here. Extend it straight, but now we're going to take it across that leg that is down. So it's like you're putting on a seat belt with your leg. So we cross it over our body and we're holding it here. You should feel the stretch on the outside of that extended leg. And go ahead and bring it back to center. I'm going to grab the outside of my foot now, and I'm going to extend through that leg once more, wherever your extension is, whether it's here or here, and I'm going to open it out to the side. So we're just changing up the stretch a little bit, getting different parts of the leg involved while we're stretching. Again, trying to keep a nice straight back, trying to keep our core engaged. And gently lower that foot back down. Pick up that opposite leg. Hug that knee into your center. Again, we're just holding it here this time. We're not moving it around yet. And 
Now I'm going to grab the arch of my foot with my right hand, extend that leg as straight as it will go. Once it's there, take it across your body. So we're crossing it over like you're putting on a seatbelt this way, and you're getting the outside of your leg stretched out. And go ahead and bring it back through center. I'm going to switch my grip. So now my left hand grabs the outside of my foot and I'm opening that leg out to the side like so. Again, just changing up the stretch a little bit. And bring that leg back through center. Go ahead and drop it back down to the ground and shake out those legs, maybe show the inner and outer thighs some love. If you felt a really deep, intense stretch there, sometimes it happens, that's okay. All right, so um, I promised that we would be staying in our chair the entire time, and I'm gonna stick to that promise. Um, so we're not gonna go on the ground into a Shavasana pose to finish and relax into our cool down, but we will do some mindful meditation here. Um, so basically, we're just going to close our eyes, try and sit nice and still, and just try and find nice alignment here. So stacking from your hips all the way up to your head, just close your eyes. There's no judgment here. Just relax the hands wherever is comfortable. And focus on your breathing. Are you breathing through your nose? Are you breathing through your mouth? And now I want us all to change our breathing so that we're all in sync. Let's all inhale through our nose and exhale through our mouth. Keep this same rhythm going, inhale, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. As I mentioned earlier, the video I released yesterday talks about breath support and using it throughout an exercise. Some of you have heard me say this a million times today. If this is your first time hearing it, I'm just going to go with it anyways. So this type of breathing, the inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth, it's relaxing. It's going to rejuvenate our body. It's going to restore us to our natural state. Um, and there are other types of breathing that you can use. Like if you're doing a big movement and you're working really hard, you can always use your breath to support that movement maybe finding a natural rhythm or make the exercise go by faster, it'll make it feel easier. There's breath you can use to help lower your stress levels, to help anxiety, to help sleep. There are so many different methods to breathing um, that we wouldn't even think about. So breath really is the key to life. Um, and it really, you know, aside from it keeping us alive, it can also support us through hard times in life. So let's all take two more deep breaths together. Let's inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Last one, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. And when you're ready, you can open up your eyes, maybe take a little shimmy through the body, maybe show your body some extra love today, going through your day. Um, let me know your thoughts about this couch potato class. It's a little bit different from the last one that we did. It all happened in a seated position versus standing or on the ground. Um, if you want more of that, I can absolutely do more of that. Or if you want more of the seated kind, we can do more of that as well. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful Saturday, a wonderful rest of your weekend. Um, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.